Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we get to work on one of my favorite reels of all time. This is a uh, Daiwa BG30. It was sent in by Robert, just asking me to do some basic service. And after all of these years, it's still a beautiful functioning reel. So we're going to show you how to, to take this reel apart, how to service it, how to keep it running for another 20 or 30 years. So the BG is the black gold and uh, came out after the uh, silver and gold series. There was an SS series in there as well. And then this is the modern day series, uh, but this is the first generation of the modern day series. So I'm going to start by removing the, uh, the exterior pieces. I'll start by taking that spool off. And uh, while I'm doing that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please uh, hit that notification button. That way you'll be able to see the reels that I service. And you'll be able to choose to see if that's a reel that you would like to uh, learn more about or maybe have one of those and you'd like to service it. This will show you how to do that. So to remove the handle, this is a screw in handle. It screws into the main gear and you want to make sure that you turn it in a clockwise manner uh, to make that uh, exchange. All right, we're going to take the three side plate screws out. Those are Phillips head screws, but they're also flat bladed screws. And you see, need to see which one works best for you. So generally I find that a flat bladed screwdriver will break the hold of the screw. And then if that uh, Phillips head screwdriver, well, it just has two more sides to catch on. So it's kind of easy when you go to twirl the, uh, the screws. So you're going to see quality throughout this reel. What, what I don't like in the BG series is the larger sizes seems like when you get up in that 7000 series and the like, you always have a wobble in the upper end of the uh, of the rotor. For whatever reason, it just seems like it's unstable. I don't know if they didn't do a good job of counterweighting it or what it is, but it always seems that those seem to, uh, uh, to wobble. Okay, just old grease, and I, I was kind of told that these reels haven't been serviced in a while. So some old grease in there, which we'll clean up. Next off, you want to take that uh, burring off. Now that burring is full of old grease. You want to wipe that away. You don't want the burrings to trap any of the, the greases in there. And then I'm going to flush this with a penetrating oil before I go and give it a good uh, soaking with normal oil. So I'll just flush that just to, to get any remnants of that old grease off. Next up then, we're going to pull the pin for the the cross wind arm and with a little effort you should be able to get that arm off. So there's a little shim washer that goes on top of that arm. I'm going to put all my pieces and parts into a parts tray. This one is the bottom of a fast food container. I wipe down as much of the old greases and that that I can off those parts. Make sure that they get nice and clean. And now I want to get to the point where I can remove the axle shaft. So there's a Phillips head screw down here that holds the block in place. And once you remove that screw, that goes into the parts tray, hold the cross wind block, and then remove the axle shaft. That axle shaft came out nice and clean and easy, so that means it's not bent. And all it needs is kind of a wipe down and clean up of the old greases. All right, I'm going to hold that. And earlier in this video, I may have said I was removing the pin. What I meant to say is I was moving the cross arm. The pin is part of this block. You can see that it's milled through there. So there's, you don't pull the pin on this one. If I said that, I'll apologize. I don't do much of editing. All right, this seems nice and clean now. I'm going to flood that with uh, fishing wheel oil. And I want to make sure that everybody's aware that when you go to do your servicing of these rods and reels and the like, please use fishing reel and related products. Don't use household greases and oils. Yeah, you can get away with them, but this isn't a game about getting away with it. It's about keeping your fishing reel equipment working and uh, doing it right. All right, we should be able to pull the main gear out now. That brings out the other bearing. We'll do the same thing with that. You can see nice machined metal gearing on this and I like that a lot. So as I mentioned, this is one of my favorite reels of all time. I know Chris keeps telling me to do a, uh, a segment on my top 10 reels. Well, 
this one would make it into those top tens. I just think that they're really nice overall. It's got the old style on the uh, oscillation. It doesn't have anything fancy. It's not a uh, uh, like a Shimano with the worm gear drives for oscillation and that. But it's just dependable. And this is typical of the types of design that you had on that reel back in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, this trailing arm was uh, pretty much common, especially in the Japanese reels of the day. All right, just going to wipe the grease off that. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll flood that. I tested those bearings before. They're nice and quiet. So just a quick cleanup on that. All right, this grease is not in the case. I want to go over here and I want to remove the rotor next. All right. I have a 12 millimeter socket. It's a Mitchell tool. You do not need that. Actually, with this one, you could probably use a box wrench because there is a minimal lip on this. Some of the deeper ones you need the socket for, and since that one's just close at hand, well, that just makes sense to go do that. All right, here's the inside setup. This one, it's not, not terribly complicated, but this happens a lot where people lose the perspective on this anti-reverse eccentric spring. That's the one that's right here that fits in the anti-reverse dog. That, uh, that hook on this one goes to the back or pointing towards you if you're holding the uh, reel in case you're trying to reinstall. Sometimes I've seen it come in the other way. Sometimes people don't realize that it goes in this little slot here and then I get questions about my anti-reverse doesn't work. When I pick it up, you have a clearer view of that this way. And this is a good place to tell you, take pictures. If you are, are unsure of the reel you're working on, well, pictures is probably the best effort there in terms of making sure that you put it back in the right way. And it's also a good reference point if you, uh, if you lose track, you can go back and take a look. This shim washer went under that eccentric uh, and bushing. Now we have the uh, ratchet for the anti-reverse. This one seems to be on there pretty good. Let's just see if we can't generally pry that up. There we go. That's the ratchet. Now this one's pretty hard to get messed up on the way back in because you have the trailing piece below, but sometimes you don't. And so again, pay attention to the orientation of which way those points were when you go to reinstall. I'm going to remove this shield here so that we can pull the, the pinion gear and burring out so that we can service those. And then we'll give everything a good spray. You don't have to remove the anti-reverse dog. And you should be able to work around with it. Here's another case. This collar is different. It's not symmetrical. Notice that you have a hook facing outwards if you're going to go northeast southwest from this look it's on the east side and that's going to be important when you go to reinstall if you don't put these back in right they may interfere with the operation of the eccentric or they may interfere with the operation of the uh, anti-reverse dog so pay attention as you take these off if you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular if you leave them in the comment section i'll be happy to answer those for you if i know the answer if I don't know the answer, I'll try and point you in the direction to get you those answers. Uh, I've got a lot of experience doing this now, over 25 years. I've uh, come to work on most reels, and also uh, you get to find out things like you know, where you can get parts and the like. You know, still searching for some reliable parts suppliers for some reels, but uh, overall, if I can help you, I will try to do that. All right, that's that collar. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll wipe it down and remember what I said this is pointing outward so I'm just going to leave that right on top of the piece there. Now most of the time I put these in my parts tray but I'm, I'm just leaving those over on the side from now. Caution if you do do something like that be careful as you move your, your hands and that around it's very easy to knock those things off and if you knock those things off well you're going to have a treasure hunt. Okay we should be able to pull this up now yeah Chris I got lucky all right, clean out the cavity there. And now I'm going to just spray everything down, including that pinion gear. 
and the inside of this case and we'll do a, a good cleaning here. So when you go to service a reel, it's not just about opening up the case, throwing some new grease in and running away. You really do want to do a couple of things. You want to make certain that you clean out the old grease because it's probably full of contaminants. You want to make sure that all of the pieces and parts are still okay. Check the teeth on gears, make sure that they're not bent or chipped or worn in any way regard. When you do your drag washers, do the same. Make sure that there's, there's um, materials left on them so that it can be an effective drag. Make sure that you clean all of the reel because you don't want the old dirts and grease getting in the way. And uh, once you do that, well, you can then you can re-grease and you can oil and you can do the other things that's appropriate. All right, you're going to notice that the, the third bearing is different. So we're just going to do the same thing here. We're going to oil them up. I'm going to clean this pinion here. It's got all the greases and oils on it. First pass is to wipe it off. Next pass, go get a soft brush and, and come through the channels. And this is why I use this towel. I don't want that stuff on my bench. I would much prefer that the old greases and oils land. And that's why I bring this towards me and I try and make the brush hit. If you have any problems with these, this is just tarnish in here. But if you have any problems where you're seeing that you have old greases accumulating in the channels, just go ahead and take a moment and just use a pick like this. It doesn't have to be this one. You can use a toothpick if you like. Uh, but just use a pick to get that old stuff out of there. And now you're checking as well as you're doing this, you're checking the, the grooves on the, on the teeth to make sure that they're all okay. All right, that's back. I'm going to flood that bearing. And now I can go reinstall this portion right after I put some grease on the pinion gear. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease. Doesn't matter whose manufacturer it use, you use, but it doesn't matter that you use fishing reel grease. I've seen everything inside of reels. I'm not going to say that it's all of them are ineffective, but I've seen a lot of different things. The best thing to use is fishing reel grease. It's designed for the marine environments. It's not that expensive, and it's uh, purpose-driven. All right, take the bearing back on now. You seat the bearing in the case. Make sure that you're pinion gear goes in that slot there. Looks like I have just a little bit of grease on that anti-reverse dog, so I might as well get that out while I'm on the doing that. I'm also going to put a drop behind there. Now, of course, if your anti-reverse dog was sticking or anything like that, yeah, you can go ahead and take it off. But uh, this one's doing just fine. And speaking of taking it off, I'm going to take this paper towel off there because I don't want to transfer any greases. I'm going to take that uh, collar Remember what I said about the east now, so it's going to go in like this. And if you had any questions, you would go back and look at your pictures. You did take pictures, right? We're going to take those three screws, which I have in my parts tray. I didn't want to leave them on the table because those are easy to knock off. I'll grab a screwdriver and let's get started with this. And those of you that know me and small screws know that this is time probably to go for a cup of coffee. All right, well, we got one in. I'm just going to snug this. I'm not going to tighten it down fully because I'm not sure if I have the other holes aligned yet. We'll come back and make sure that they're all tight after I set that second one. Probably noticing I do wear a glove on my hand. I do like to keep most of this oil and grease off of it. I just haven't found a way to put a glove on my working hand and still have control of the tools and all, so I don't. And we'll tighten that second one down. Now we got one more here. So uh, I do have to play around a little bit with that. And right now I just use a dab of fishing reel grease to kind of act as a, a kind of a temporary glue here. Kind of help me line that screw up and get it started. You can do the same. All right, that's up next. Now we got our collar that we've cleaned up. Now that collar is going to be on a, 
uh, the two flat sides, so you have to locate that. And you go to reinstall. You can get it in here, you just have to play around a little bit with it. Alright, now we have that flat washer. Now we have the eccentric that's going to help spring that anti-reverse back. Remember what we said the direction was? The direction was pointing at you. Very easy to confuse this one. Okay, now we're on. And what you'll see now is it's going to spin. And when it's spinning, it's going to just let the anti-reverse dog rest to the back. As soon as you go to back pedal, it's going to pull the dog in. Notice? That's how this anti-reverse works. Okay, check the bottom of this, make sure that that's nice and clean. This one is clean, but for demonstration purposes, we'll do that. You have a little spring and a toggle under here. You can see how the, uh, the trip lever comes out. I like to oil that. I don't like to take it off unless, it's need, unless you need to take it off. The bale was working before, so you want to oil the seams of the bale. And you want to oil the line roller and then just work it in a couple of times just to make sure that it's operating loosely. Now we can go ahead and put this back on. Sometimes you need to hold the pinion gear on the bottom while you go to do that. You want to make sure that the you have enough clearance here to go put the nut on. And then on this we're just going to go ahead and put our nut on. This nut doesn't have a, a tie down screw which some of these do. The reason, the reason that they put tie-down screws on these is that sometimes these work themselves free with the rotation of the, uh, of the thing. Give it a spin. Nice. Nice and quiet. Nice operations. Again, one of my favorite wheels. I right, just noticed there's just a little piece of grease there. All right. Let's go ahead and put the rest of the wheel back together then. We're going to start uh, start by putting some grease in the channel where that crosswind block is going to ride. Right here. Now one, one. Make sure we get our bearing into the back. We've oiled those bearings now. Don't use the lubrication oil as uh, or the WD-40s or penetrating oils or any of those things. Don't use that as a lubricating oil. And put a little bit of grease onto the back. Remember the orientation on this one. If you didn't remember the orientation, go to your pictures. We've cleaned up the main gear. We've checked the teeth on the main gear. They're all uniform. There's no chips, cracks. There's no warping, which means that the main gear is good. Go ahead and get, it, get enough grease on there that it's going to make a difference. Don't put too much in there. If you overload it, well, the only thing that's going to happen with overloaded grease is it's going to spin off and do no good anyway. That goes in next. We're going to take our shaft. Just a light coat of grease. Now, you don't want to put too much grease on the shaft because it's only going to squeeze off when it tries to go through the pinion gear. Find the flat side of the, uh, the shaft that's going to go into the crosswind block. Just like that. And now we can take our tie down screw and we're going to put that in next. So, if you're like Robert, if you have a reel that you want to have serviced and you're not up for doing it yourself, and again, this, the, the purpose of this channel is to teach you to do it yourself, but I understand uh, some folks don't have the time or the inclination to do it, but they want to continue with very free operation and uh, and the like so I do offer a service of reels whether it needs to be repaired or whether it just needs a, a good tune-up and servicing like this one well if you if you want that just uh, send me a note send it to the email on the business card that uh, follows I will be happy to provide you with that information okay we want to press down to make sure that we anchor the Crosswind arm into that block, also on here. 
Then we had a small shim washer that's going to actually hold that in place. And then we had that bearing that we took off before. Last thing then, I got to clean this case. And it was just a little bit of overflow of grease there. I want to put grease into the channel here where that other side of the stud is going to ride for the cross wind block. And then we can just turn that over and put that in. Just like that. Make sure you get a nice sound snap. The three screws that I took out of the case are all the same. You do want to pay attention when you do take screws out of the side plate. There are times and there are manufacturers where those screws are different. And if you do notice they are different, then you want to mark the location for the larger or the longer or the smaller screws. So that when you go to reinstall, you put them in the right places. Shimano has a, a good habit of doing that. I just worked on a Shimano twin power and for the side plate screws, we had three different screws. I think that they would standardize. I can't imagine how they get any manufacturing efficiencies from using three different tools to put them in. Okay, those are on. I just want to give that, I was using that uh, Phillips head to bring them in. I just want to give them, make sure that they're tight. So today's BG series is a whole different machine. It, uh, the, the gearing, the materials, the design. But this is really what set the standard for the BG series. And they're just really nice, well-made reels. We're going to go up top. We're going to do the spool. We want to check the drags. I think I have Teflon washers in this. I'm not sure. We're going to find out. You want to check the drags for wear. You want to make sure that they're clean. You want to make sure that the metals don't have any corrosion on them. And you want to reinstall here. We have the Teflon washers in here. We have one little bottom one here. And we have a bunch of Teflon. So you don't do anything with Teflon washers. Just make sure they're clean. By their nature, these are petroleum products. They do not need oils or greases. This is a six drag setup. You have one sitting in the bottom, which I did not remove. You have the keyed washer, which is the round one, and you have an eared washer, which is the one with prongs that fits in the slots of the spool. The one with the prongs goes in the middle. It's time to put that one in. One more of these. Last of the keyed washers. And then this is a spring clip, so you want to pay, pay attention when you took that out. Going in, you want to locate the groove, put one side in and walk it around. And make sure it gets seated back in the in the groove. This, there's no purpose to that other than it being a retention clip. If you've lost it, you can still do it. But remember when you take your spool off that the the drag washers are going to spill out. I'll put the adjuster button on. Make sure that that drag holds. Should Teflon washers rarely. There we go. That's fine. We'll put our handle back on. I'm going to put a shot of oil into this stud where that collapsible handle goes. Also going to do the same on the, the side of the knob here where we turn. Now we can give it a test. Well, there you go. Robert, this one's all ready to go fishing again. Anti-reverse off. Anti-reverse on. Make sure the bail is flipping nicely. And that's it. That's one of the reasons why I like this reel so much. Just a solid, well-made, dependable reel that will last forever with proper maintenance. Speaking of maintenance, I'll take a little moment here. I'm going to go clean this reel up. I'm going to use a rod and reel cleaner and a kitchen scrubby just to take off any residual dusts in that. And while I'm doing that, I want to just say thank you to our first responders and essential personnel and to everybody trying to make life normal during this pandemic. Essential personnel, of course, it's not just uh, the EMTs and the like, but it's the delivery systems, it's our post offices, it's our teachers, it's everybody who's trying to make sense out of all of this as we go forward. Thank you all. All right, that's it. We're clean. 
we're ready to get this one back out there fishing again. It's got a second chance. So, so everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.